it. Marcuse. Herbert Marcuse deserves attention very briefly for his comments on Hegel. As a radical and leftist, Marcuse is closer to Hegel than most commentators. In a telling preface entitled A Note on Dialectic, Marcuse began. This book was written in the hope that it would make a small contribution to the revival, not of Hegel, but of mental faculty which is in danger of being obliterated, the power of negative thinking. As Hegel defines it, thinking is indeed essentially the negation of that which is immediately before us. What does he mean by negation? The central category of dialectic? The power of negative thinking. What does this mean? What is it that must be negated? The world contradicts itself. Negative thinking is the tool by which the contradictions are resolved. Dialectical thought invalidates the a priori opposition of value and fact by understanding all facts as stages of a single process, a process in which subject and object are so joined that truth can be determined only within the subject's object totality. More plainly, the determinism of the world contradicts man's belief in his freedom, and negative thinking institutes a negation of thoughts and action against the world to bend it to man's revolutionary reason. After Hegel, the real is the rational, that is, it is progress in the consciousness of freedom, Hegel's phrase, as it remakes the world to conform to man's freedom. This means revolution. Dialectical thought starts with the experience that the world is unfree, that is to say, man and nature exist in conditions of alienation, exist as other than they are, Reason or thought sees the contradictory nature of reality and transforms it because freedom is the innermost dynamic of existence. It is essentially negative towards an unfree world and works to master alienation. For the history of mankind, this means attainment of a state of the world in which the individual persists in inescapable harmony with the whole and in which the conditions and relations of his world possess no essential objectivity independent of the individual. As to the prospect of attaining such a state, Hegel was pessimistic, but Marcuse is not. It means shattering the present world order to create a totally man-made world and order which has no essential objectivity independent of the individual. Thus, dialectical philosophy, entering a world it did not create, is of necessity destructive in thoughts and action. It looks ahead to a goal which is beyond good and evil, truth and falsehood, that is, beyond God. The reason of the free man, the man who declares his autonomy from God, is in effect Marcuse's messiah. Marcuse's two meaningful propositions describing our situation are The whole truth is the truth, and the whole is false. A new whole must be established beyond good and evil. Man is defined by Marcuse after Hegel in terms of reason. Freedom presupposed autonomous reason, and autonomous reason presupposes freedom. But freedom, and reason especially, exist only through its realisation, the process of its being made real. This means remaking the world and the process is revolution. Of the social order, Marcuse writes, And, Hegel continues, that which persists in this merely empirical manner without being adapted to the idea of reason cannot be regarded as real. The political system has to be destroyed and transformed into a new rational order. Such a transformation cannot be made without violence. The first sentence is an accurate report of Hegel's position, the second is Marcuse's conclusion. But Marcuse's conclusion follows logically from Hegel's premise and is more faithful to Hegel than the formerly correct statements of timid professors who cite Hegel's words but not his meaning. Because there is no essence to man, and being is a continuous becoming, not a state, Every state of existence has to be surpassed. Truth is a process and 
cannot be stated as a proposition. Hence, falsehood, bondage and irrationality are themselves essential parts of the truth. The goal is a world of truth created by man. The world is an estranged and untrue world so long as man does not destroy its dead objectivity and recognize himself and his own life behind the fixed form of things and laws. When he finally wins his self-consciousness, he is on his way not only to the truth of himself, but also of his world. And with the recognition goes the doing. He will try to put this truth into action and make the world what it essentially is, namely the fulfillment of man's self-consciousness. This means total war against God's beyond in the name of man's beyond the revolutionary world order. Man's instrument is the power of negative thinking and revolutionary destruction. Is it any wonder that the world is given over to destruction? Marcuse, having denied an essence in order to strike at God's order, reveals here a new essence implicit in his negative thinking. The world is already essentially the fulfillment of man's self-consciousness. The war has been newly declared, and Marcuse is dividing the spoils before the battle. King Ahab, for all his evil, had better sense. Let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth off. 1 Kings 20, 11. A final note. There is no one and many in Marcuse because there is no truth, only process. Neither the oneness of unity or things, nor the particularity or individuality of things is of any importance. All alike are committed to a process of destruction. The one and the many apply to life. Philosophy, from Hegel to Marcuse, applies to death and invites it 